Hello, crafty friends, and welcome to my channel. I'm Adrienne Bozy of Alice Scraps Wonderland. Today I want to share a brand new Sizzix tool that every paper crafter needs, the scoring board and trimmer. This versatile tool has a lot of features. First is the trimmer. The blade glides smoothly over the trimmer bar and features a deep cutting channel. You get centimeters on the cream portion of the board and inches on the plastic guard to help you trim to a specific measurement. And the blade is super easy to switch out by just snapping the trimmer bar out to slide the blade off. The scoring board portion also features both inches and centimeters. Simply slide the scoring portion out of the board and flip it over. The hub has a ruler with measurements for cutting. To score, pull up on the spring-loaded hub and rotate the ruler to 90 degrees. You can also position the hub at different angles for cutting and scoring from 75 degrees to 15 degrees. And like the scoring board, this ruler also flips over, revealing centimeters. Now you can follow tutorials in metric and imperial systems no matter where you live. The fold and form tool is stored right inside the board to make sure you always have it at hand. And the board also includes several punches. One is to help you notch envelopes, another is a hole punch, and this final one is a corner rounder and chamfer. You can use these punches right where they are to easily align your papers up, or you can take them out and use them anywhere. To put them back, simply line up the notches and snap them back in place. But here's why every paper crafter needs this tool. You can create bespoke cards and envelopes, tags, boxes, rosettes, and so much more. This tool also comes with an envelope and box generator. I've placed a link in the description to the Sizzix site where you can get more information. Today I'll be showing you how to make a notched flag banner. Let's get into it. I'm using this patterned paper from Prima Marketing, as well as this piece of rose cardstock from Sizzix to create the base of the banner. First, I cut the cardstock in half lengthwise, creating two strips that are 11 and 3 quarters long by 4 and 1 8 inches high. I then cut these strips into five rectangles that are 3 inches wide. When cutting, make sure you apply light pressure to cleanly cut through your material. I lift up on the hub and swing the ruler to the 30 degree mark. Make sure you push back on the ruler to lock it into place and get a true 30 degree cut. Then I line up the corner of the rectangle with the center of the cut channel and cut from the corner down to about the 1 inch mark. I flip the rectangle over and line up the other corner with the center of the cut channel, then again cut down to about the 1 inch mark. This will create a notched flag banner. I then cut the patterned paper into a 12 inch long by 4 inch tall strip. I then cut 5 rectangles at 2 and 3 quarter inches wide. Again, I place the ruler at the 30 degree angle and just like the cardstock, I line up the corner with the center of the cut channel, but this time I cut down to the 3 quarter mark. I then flip and repeat to create the notch. add a little texture, I use the Sizzix Surface Multi-Tool, distressing the sides and bottom of each patterned paper banner. I then check each banner to make sure the layers look good. Two of my patterned paper banners need a little trimming down on top, so I pull the scoring board and trimmer out again. I just eyeball what I need to trim off, but remember to always start by trimming off less. You can always take off more, but you can't add to your banner once you've cut it. I then use permanent adhesive to adhere the two layers together, avoiding the top corners where I'll be punching holes in a minute. I 
I then use the hole punch to add a hole to each top corner of the banners. There are some markings engraved on the board here to help you line up and punch in the same spot each time. This is sort of personal preference how far in you want your holes. I've already cut out a bunch of dies from Sizzix and Tim Holtz and prepped many of them, including glittering these skull and raven die cuts. I've already glued two of the three die cut layers together on these pieces that will finish together. These layers will provide stability for glittering the cuts. I use Sizzix Express Glue to adhere the layers together. I take my time lining up the cuts and then place them under a stamp block to ensure good adhesion. For glitter, I use Rock Candy and Nightfall from Tim Holtz, but you can use any of your favorite glitters, including ones from Sizzix. To adhere the glitter to the die cut, I use Ranger's Glossy Accents. I cover the entire die cut in a thin layer of this medium, then generously sprinkle the glitter on top. I also prepared several of these flowers from the In the Meadow die set, but I saved one of each type to show you how to create them in a way that adds lots of dimension. This first flower gets a small dot of liquid adhesive and two layers are glued together. I use the Sizzix Intricate Multi-Tool to help me place the tiny flower center. Not every flower has to be super dimensional, so this one remains simple with a single layer. The white flower gets the black center glued on. Then I adhere the top layer with a bit of foam adhesive, keeping it toward the center of the flower. I line up one corner and then stick down this layer. I then add a small dot of liquid adhesive to each corner of the top layer and pinch it down for a few seconds. This creates a more realistic dimension, curving just like a real flower. This final flower gets the same treatment, just on a smaller scale. I also add the pearl before pinching the sides down because it is easier to do it at this step. Then I add pearls to several of the other flower centers. Now it's time to decorate the banners. Each one gets a small circle die cut. I prep each circle with a bit of foam adhesive. Then I match up the skulls, ravens, and flowers with each banner. I always dry fit my embellishments first and start out by adding one layer of foam adhesive to the back of each raven. I stick the circle down on the first banner, then dry fit the raven with the larger flower. I realize I need another layer of adhesive to the back of the raven and add that. Then I use foam adhesive and liquid adhesive to glue down all of the other flowers. I do the same thing with each of the other banners, adding two layers of foam adhesive to the backs of both skulls as well. assembling, I cut some matching ribbon and string the banners on. And the final step which I don't show here is adding a few more pearls to each banner. 
That's it for this project, but don't worry, I'll be sharing a lot more tutorials and project inspiration using the new Sizzix scoring board and trimmer tool. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Until next time, happy crafting!